Welcome to Recently Logged, where we're talking about a movie with sandworms. Hello? Hi. Hey. Hi. Hello? Hi. <laughs> um, <laughs> I don't know what's. I don't know how to follow that up. Uh, uh, welcome to Recently Logged. This is our Halloween episode. Yeah, we're following through with our promise from last week, <laughs> and also from like a year ago. I was about to say we we mentioned Beetlejuice on the pod like I don't know a long time. It, it was like two years ago or something. many many years ago. <laughs> but but we're finally doing it. This is it's this week. Yeah, I mean this is the uh, this is our first time ever watching Beetlejuice ever. For, yes. for all you Beetlejuice fans for, out there. For all the Beetlejuice fans who were anxiously awaiting. Exactly. I see. I, I mean, I guess there are Beetlejuice fans. Yeah, there are a lot of Beetlejuice fans. But, like, was was anyone in the recently logged audience really holding their breath waiting for the Beetlejuice episode? I'm not sure if there's anyone in the recently logged audience, so... <laughs> Oof. Fair point, fair point. Uh, but, yeah, do we want to do we want to get into it? And get into the discussion we do i guess um i uh, got some facts I, I was hoping the intro would be a bit spookier but it's, it's just mean, kind of just kind of vanilla right now we have to be spooky about <laughs> i don't know we could have someone like die in the background or something I don't <laughs> what <laughs> it's kind of spooky no it's not well i guess not <laughs> We need some like David Lynch white noise <laughs> yeah. over over the background while we're recording. <laughs> yeah, there we go. We just need David Lynch <laughs> in the studio. There you go. Automatically spookier. <laughs> but anyway, yes, let's let's tell the people what they need to know about Beetlejuice. Alright. Alright, so let's let's get into the basic facts of Beetlejuice. The basic <laughs> Beetle facts. <laughs> I was about to say that I don't think there's a B thing that, that made that implies facts you know there's no sim there's no synonym there micah mm -hmm. all right well we're talking about beetlejuice which came out in 1988 it is rated pg somehow Some <laughs> it's an hour and 32 minutes it's little imdb description is the spirits of a deceased couple are harassed by an unbearable family that has moved into their home and hire a malicious spirit to drive them out it's a story of harassment and ghosts, it apparently. Won, it won an Oscar for best makeup. Hey, good. Which, who knew this won an Oscar? I didn't. <laughs> uh, not me. <laughs> its cast uh, consists of Alec Baldwin, Gina Davis, Jeffrey Jones, Catherine O'Hara, I think yes, is how you say it. Yes, And Winona Ryder and Michael Keaton. Which, <laughs> by the way, for a little fact out there, so uh, I'll mention that Bo Welch did the production design on this. Which Love Bo Welch. He's always amazing. <laughs> Great stuff. But apparently, he and Catherine O'Hara, who are now married, met on the set, and like <laughs> that's that's how they met, and now they're married. <laughs> Wild stuff. Uh, uh, that would make a great episode of How I Met Your Mother, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, directed by Tim Burton, written by Michael McDowell and Larry Wilson and Warren Scarin, <laughs> and it is composed by Danny Elfman. The Elfman the himself. Icon. Good stuff, I dare say. <laughs> but yeah, that is that is the Beetlejuice. Is that Beetlejuice, Mike? That is Beetlejuice. Okay. Uh, well, I guess we'll get into what we thought about Beetlejuice they're, now that you guys know everything about it. They know everything. They're experts. About, they're, they're Beetlejuice experts. They know more about it than we do. That's. I mean, <laughs> they're they they uh, they have a, they're an they, encyclopedia of knowledge on Beetlejuice. They're you're, they're probably they probably do know more about it than I do. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, yes. Let's let's get into uh, what we thought of Beetlejuice. Let's do it. All right, Remy. So, uh, what are your opening thoughts about Beetlejuice? <laughs> um, <laughs> I mean, I would say that I like Beetlejuice. Oh, really? Would you like to elaborate <laughs> that, but not fully? Yes. <laughs> um, uh, I think Beetlejuice is one of Tim Burton's better movies uh, he's made some like straight up awful movies so i mean that's not saying too much but i think it's definitely in the higher tier of tim burton flicks if you're looking at his directorial filmography 
which is a very <laughs> two very large words <laughs> to put next to each other. Directorial filmography. Yeah, <laughs> sound very fancy. <laughs> exactly. Um, but yeah, Beetlejuice. Um, it has a lot of fun visual ideas because um, I mean you got Bo Welch on it. Of course it does. <laughs> um, the score I think is one of my favorites in a Tim Burton movie. It's got a lot of horns. It's very brassy. I like that. Um, it really helps set the tone for this movie. Like, it wouldn't be nearly as good without its score. Yeah. Um, I like the main cast. Alec Baldwin is surprisingly good in this. Um, who plays the... Uh, who Who is the two leads? Uh, Gina Davis. Gina Davis, the... yes. I love her in this. <laughs> I don't even know who she is, but she's an outstanding I don't, performance. <laughs> I, I, I don't think I've seen her in much else, um, but she rocks it in this, She's man. in Stuart Little. <laughs> Stuart. Stuart and the Fly. Um, she really hasn't been in much. Yeah, she hasn't been in that much. Uh, but yeah, I, enjoy, I enjoyed the two leads a lot. Um, Tim Burton's direction is actually really good in this and really well suited for this. Uh, I think it's properly creepy. I think it's properly funny. Um, some of the jokes don't hit as well as I wish they did, but, I mean, uh, comedy is pretty subjective, so that could change from person to person. But um, on the whole, I very much like it. I, I think it's definitely in the upper tier of Tim Burton's work, and I think it's a pretty solid uh, comedy slash horror ish movie, spooky movie. <laughs> so, what did, what did you rate it, Remy? I gave it a eight out of ten. Mm. Very, very interesting. Very, very interesting. <laughs> so, so Micah. <laughs> yes. What did, What did you think of the nineteen eighty eight film Beetlejuice? <laughs> so, I I liked it. I did. Um, I liked it. I did. <laughs> but. <laughs> <laughs> but, like, I like everything about the movie, mm-hmm. but, like, the movie's plot in practice. <laughs> like, I, I don't know really how to describe it, but, like, you hit the second half of the movie, a little bit over halfway through. Yeah. And there's just not much that I care about that's happening. Like, there are still good things that are happening, but it kind of, like, becomes this weird thing that I don't like as much. And I really, really, really dislike Beetlejuice. <laughs> like, I just find his, the, not not his character annoying, but even the performance of his character <laughs> annoying. It can be very grating sometimes. Um, like, I don't know. Like, it's like those kind of characters, like like a, like a cat in the hat, like a, like a the mask, that kind of a character. Very bouncy, very loud, very in your face. <laughs> very loud. But done in a way that I don't find interesting to watch at all. I don't find funny at all. I don't like at all. I love the production design. I love the cast. I love the like a lot of the ideas and the filmmaking. But I just really don't like Beetlejuice. <laughs> and don't even understand why he's the title character when he's kind of like B-plot status almost. <laughs> it's, yeah, we were talking about that when we watched it this past time. I was like, you know, they give about as much time to Beetlejuice as they would like a very uh, large B-plot. <laughs> <laughs> like, this is weird, right? The, the Danny Elfman score, outstanding. Exactly. The Bo Welch production design, phenomenal. The cast, funny, besides... Michael Keaton. <laughs> um, the costuming and makeup is quite good. The costuming and makeup. Didn't even good. mention. <laughs> the special effects, like, all good except for that one sandworm sand kick up <laughs> thing. <laughs> yeah. Well, not everything can age like fine wine, Micah. <laughs> <laughs> it's just, uh, it's just, I don't know. Like, I have this, like, like, I gave it three and a half stars and I do like it quite a bit. But I have, like, this distaste for it just because I don't like anything that the movie is actually doing with its plot. <laughs> okay. That's that's fair, Micah. Fair analysis. Would it? You said you rated it three already. Three you already said stars, what you rated yes. it. I was going to ask you what you rated it. <laughs> it's going to be cool, Micah. Uh, but, yeah, that, I, mean, I mean, I guess that's it. Yeah. We'll catch you guys in the next one. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Have a good week. <laughs> Enjoy <Yeah>. Halloween. <laughs> Perhaps we should talk about Beetlejuice more substantially before we leave, Mike. What, Revy? More <laughs> substantially? How do we do that? We move on to the next segment, Mike. <laughs> next segment? <laughs> yes. Wah. Cut to Mr. Krabs. Cut, like an insert frame. <laughs> the insert for shocked face frame. <laughs> yes. Uh, but yes, on to the next segment. <laughs> hello, hello. Hola. Welcome to 
the meat. The spooky meat. <laughs> the spooky meat. <laughs> what do you have hanging in your meat freezer? <laughs> I, I don't know what could be spooky about meat unless it's trying to, like, kill you. <laughs> no, like, yeah. Like, like a zombie like a, like kind a of meat, thing. Like a meat freezer, you know? A meat like, freezer. I like, guess meat freezers very, are vaguely... That's a, that's a horror thing. Vaguely spooky. Like the blob. Lots of, <laughs> lots of hang... Like, lots of, lots of meat, meat hooks. <laughs> The meat hooks sink your meat hooks into this, ladies and gentlemen. Although we did mention the spooky ambient noise earlier, and meat freezers have that, so that's true. <laughs> I, I guess I guess you have made your point, Mike. But no, like meat hooks are a very common thing in horror. Meat hooks are scary, man. That's yeah, They're huge. exactly. <laughs> Why do you need a hook that big? To hang dead cows? <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> Why would you need to hang a whole cow, Micah? Just chop up the cow into little pieces like a normal person. <laughs> but yes, uh, this is this is the meatiest uh, the section meats. of the podcast where we talk about Beetlejuice. Yes. Yes. When, if, when did we rename this? To, like, how did that become a thing? Because we used to just call this main discussion. And then one week, Robbie was like, the meats. And we were like, yes, do that. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> For for the reason, it just kind of happened. We need we need a recently logged historian the to, timeline. to be keeping track of all of this, see. all the changes. Yes, just just there's one, been like, quite a few. Just one like recently logged super fan. <laughs> it's not gonna happen. Just just one to to keep a log of everything we're doing because we're not gonna do it. <laughs> start an archive website called the recently logged log. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. Uh, do you have any questions about? The movie Beetlegeist. I sure do have some questions, buddy. <laughs> um, well, I mean, like, just as a joke, I said I have a lot of questions, but I don't know if I... I mean, I guess I have a question. Um, <laughs> I have lots of questions. <laughs> I don't know if I have any questions. <laughs> I gotta keep you on your toes, Micah. Um <sighs> Wow. Do you have a question? <laughs> I don't. I don't know. Um, I guess. What did you think of a lot of the like prosthetic makeup and costuming oh, yeah. and stuff like that? Sure. Just the sure. visual. It's, it's Oscar winning style. stuff. Exactly. Yeah. Um, I mean, I think it's. I think the visual style is really good. I think it's a lot of fun too because you grab from a Burton style that he usually only touches in his stop motion. Mm -hmm. And I mean, obviously, there's a lot of stop motion in this. There is quite but, a bit. But um, like pairing that with live action is a really cool thing, especially being that this movie is as like kind of like goofy and fun as it is yeah. like, it, like it makes for a good tone pairing uh i was going through like trivia and facts about this uh last night and this morning and i mentioned this to you but i'll mention it to our audience apparently originally in the first draft of this like like in the first ideas and notes and everything mm -hmm. this was going to be a lot more graphic and a lot darker of a movie and i wonder like if they would have kept the claymation stuff in that version i mean i i imagine probably so like i, I don't mean, know what yeah, else like, you would like use. this is this is pre cgi tim burton era yeah so like I wonder how it would be. I mean, yeah, no, it would be, it would be, it'd be really weird. I think trying to do it with something else. But uh, no, I, I think it really works for this really well, yeah, tonally and just visually. Yeah, no, I, I mean, I just think um, the particular flavor of gothic that Tim Burton is in a lot of his art direction fits this movie very well. Just, mm, I like, like it. It's like it's something that. <laughs> Tim Burton came up with <laughs> that, he, that he did lots of sketches for. <laughs> Those sandworms are pretty cool. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, I don't think we ever explained no, the opening didn't. joke. There are sandworms in this movie, for those of you who don't know. And we were making a joke because Dune just came out. Dune just dropped. And we just dropped. watched it. And, you know, Dune has sandworms. And the joke is going to age like milk because no one's going to no one's gonna get it. <laughs> Well, no, but like see, that's that's the good months, that's like the good it. quality of this Ruby is because it won't be a joke. I see. And they'll just be like, "Yeah, movie was." That's kind of well. That's kind of bizarre that they would bring it up, but sure. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, what do you think of like the uh, the main couple as characters? 
Um, the fact that the movie like centers around them and just, all just that, any, just anything, just them as characters. Um, I think they're actually a really fun like idea for a main like like the lead of the story is just this couple who dies. <laughs> <laughs> I I, th- I really like that idea. I think um, the chemistry that uh, they have like together on screen is really great. Um, as you said, I think when we were watching it the second time, you would take like <laughs> more, like a good half hour more of them just kind of hanging out. I would. No, I'd take a whole movie of it, Ravi. Forget that. <laughs> like, I just, just them hanging out is, is fine by me. <laughs> I was about to say, they're, they're like naive enough about a lot of stuff that like we get to explore the world in a satisfying way. Um, they have good chemistry. I was about to say the good chemistry. Their performances are good. Now, yeah, no, I I really like them as like the leads for the story. It's it's quite nice. They're funny, and 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 it's another <laughs> instance of Alec Baldwin's voice actually being put to good use. <laughs> Because he has a very Alec Baldwin voice. Are you saying Boss Baby is the other example? Like yes, Boss Baby is another example. <laughs> oh no! But no, like you know, like this is this is I think the youngest role I've ever seen from him, and it's yeah. kind of weird seeing him that young and him still just having like Alec Baldwin voice. <laughs> he literally hasn't changed at all. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I do think it was like a really good cast choice, and I think from a story standpoint, like you were saying, it is it is fun to see them in this world a lot but i do wish it kind of like as a movie focused more on them like attempting like like learning and attempting to be scarier like i wish that was the the plot of the movie was like and and i mentioned this to you was that like it was just them being being a cool couple dead uh, yeah. trying to figure out the crazy world <laughs> crazy. trying to become scary to get these people out of their house yeah. and along the way they meet the like they meet Winona Ryder's character and become her parents the metaphorical <laughs> dad <laughs> um but like i don't know like that that would have just been way way more interesting to me than anything to do with Beetlejuice. <laughs> yeah, that's fair. I mean, and the fact that they the fact that they wrote like two main characters that are interesting enough that you're like, "Oh yeah, it actually it actually spend a whole movie just with them, you know?" Right? Like they they really are like fun something, to something watch to on apply, screen. Yeah. <laughs> and Apparently, um just not to cut in too much, but this was Alec Baldwin's eight, uh, eighth movie like in his entire career. Huh. Crazy. <laughs> but yes. Um, but yeah, I, I, uh, what do you think of uh, the the family though? The family, like the the family that moves in. <laughs> yes, with with Otho and everything. <laughs> I love how Otho is just there ninety percent of the time. <laughs> well, if you recall, he moved to the country with. Them. <laughs> That's true. It's true. But uh, what do I think of them? Um, I think they're. F- fine the dad is actually really funny in this which i was not expecting like just the character (laughs) um but like i don't know i'm not a big fan of the like direction they go with the climax with the whole like commercialize the haunted house kind of thing yeah again Um, i just feel like the like the plot in the second (laughs) half just isn't good (laughs) yeah but like other than that i think the characters are a lot of fun to watch most of the time like um the dinner scenes are both really fun uh i I don't know i don't know what i don't know i don't really know what to say about them what would you say about them like yeah i think i think they're pretty fun i think most of again before the second half of the movie like most of like the jokes and stuff with them are really fun i like them as characters i like just how like (laughs) weird they all are and how like this weird (laughs) brand of gothic they are exactly like their their stylistic sensibilities are like this whack mix of i don't even know man like i think that's that alone is just funny it is and like you said the dad character is like to have some fantastic jokes. I was about to say some of the some of the best comedic bits in the movie are just him. <laughs> um, and you know, goth uh, Winona Ryder is a plus. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, shout out to Winona Ryder. She was seventeen. Yeah, she was seventeen when she when they made this, this movie. movie. That's crazy. That's wild. <laughs> she might have actually been young. That was when the movie came out. Oh she my was God. seventeen when it came out. I don't know. She. I don't know when they filmed it. So Man. dang. 
That's wild. Just shout out to her. <laughs> I was going to say, shout out to her. She was killing the game, even back then, I guess. Um, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, Otho's fun, I guess, most of the time until he's, like, annoying. See, he's he's fun to a point. He's, and then at, he's at some fun point, it just kinda... until plot happens. Until plot happens, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, I think, I think the whole wedding climax kind of isn't great. It feels rushed, again, because there's nothing it really does. introduced with Beetlejuice for weddings until then. He's like, hey, I gotta get hitched to get out of here. And then she's like, okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and then, like, them, them commercializing the ghosts <laughs> makes sense because their yeah. whole characters are just, they're just supposed to be really greedy. Yeah, no, um, I was about to say, that that makes sense. But at the same time, it doesn't really It's just feel, kind of a boring way. Yeah, it doesn't to... really feel an, in line with the energy of the rest of the movie. Yeah. And then um, Otho with the book thing, you're like, why? Like, what's the purpose of this? So, like, just, just the entire second half plot, all of the threads smushing together into the finale, I just, it's... It's just not good, in my opinion. Oh, yeah, no, it's definitely one of the messiest climaxes I've seen from a Burton film that I actually think is, like, good. Yeah. <laughs> um, but let's, let's, get to, let's get to that question that's burning in the back of, of all of the listeners' minds. It is. Uh, what do you think of, of Beetlejuice? Of Beetlejuice? Um, you know... <laughs> I think Beetlejuice is a very interesting character to put in your movie. <laughs> yeah, and, and I think I think it's interesting too is that Michael Crichton really liked the character. Michael Crichton. I mean Michael Keaton. <laughs> Michael. Uh-huh. Jurassic Park guy really <laughs> loves Beetlejuice. <laughs> no, uh, I get their names mixed up. Yes, yes. sometimes though. <laughs> Michael Keaton. Michael Keaton really loves Beetlejuice uh-huh. and like ad libbed like ninety percent of his lines for this. I think that's kind of funny though. Like the fact that the fact that um the character is as cohesive as it is and the fact that he ad libbed a bunch of it is kind of impressive. Cohesive, yes. <laughs> Good question. Mm, um <laughs> as for Beetlejuice as a character, he can be very grating at times. Um or he can be really funny at times. Yeah, I was, yeah. About, I was about to say too, I don't want to give him an entirely bad rap. Yeah, I was, um I do think a, like a lot of his jokes not even his jokes but like his presence as a joke mm-hmm. <laughs> in the first half of the movie <laughs> yeah is funny like the the television thing is funny yeah um his first introduction like in the miniature is funny the fly eating thing is funny <laughs> All, all, like, I think he's pretty funny until he gets popped out of the grave. Mm. That's fair, I guess. Um, until he becomes an active presence <laughs> in the movie. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I don't know. He's, it's an odd character. I don't like how, quote, like, problematic, to use that phrase kind of loosely, a lot of his stuff is. Yeah. Um... But like when it when he's not doing that or when he's not just being super loud for being for the sake of being super loud, I'm like, yeah, sure, why not? Beetlejuice. Yeah, and it's <laughs> I like it. It's <laughs> weird too. Like they they make him a very uh, perverted character, yes. if you will. Yes, they but do. But like, what's the real purpose? Like, I understand using that as an integrity. And, and it, again, I was reading history on this movie. It draws back to what the original Beetlejuice version was going to be, of which mm-hmm. the main conflict was going to be him uh, sexually assaulting yes. <laughs> uh, the main character, which, again, draws back into that. So he was always supposed to be like, uh, yeah, yeah. like that, but yet in this <laughs> like version that. of the, like, I think he's supposed to be, like, enduring, and people like this character. I know people who have dressed up as this character. I don't know, man. What would, why would you... <laughs> Like, I could see the, the the stage version, like, the musical version of yeah. Beetlejuice. He's actually a fun character, he really in my is. opinion. Yeah. He kind of carries the stage version of the... Um, but it's very weird. Like, just, like, his humor and, like, the stuff he does. I, like, am I supposed to be like, oh, good one, Beetlejuice. You Classic looked under Beetlejuice. her dress. Classic Beetlejuice, am I right? Like, I feel like it should be, like, an actual, like 
thing where the, where, the, where the two ghost peoples, too, anyway, should yeah. be, like, actively trying to get this man to go away <laughs> for fear of subjecting Winona Ryder. Like, they mention it, but, exactly. like, I feel like this should be, like, a big thing, <laughs> right? Like, don't, go, don't let this guy anywhere near a teenager. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, so, yeah, it's just a very odd instance of character writing that's been brought over from when he was supposed to be more creepy and more of like a violent antagonist. I was about to say uh, the way he is now he's not like super like the the stakes don't feel incredibly high when he like pops out for the last time you know but like he just comes off as kind of like a slimy kind of guy and i don't get why people love him as much as they do yeah and slimy not in like <laughs> not in, in a, an not, in a fun, not in a fun way <laughs> just, not a fun slimy just kind of like kind of like you're yeah. like yep that guy sure is the worst <laughs> yeah i don't know that's that's about it and i like yeah it's just weird to me that he like that the movie is named after and i think that was like the yeah, weirdest thing going that's, into it that's like, gotta the movie, be the weirdest thing the movie is named after him there's so much stuff where like people i've seen so many things of like people putting like the beetlejuice character on things mm-hmm. people dressing as beetlejuice i'm like what is the appeal of this character that i am missing entirely <laughs> he's got a cool character design no he's got a cool character design <laughs> and i don't even think michael keaton gives a bad quote-unquote no, performance he gives a especially pretty good being performance, that he's ad-libbing yeah. this stuff like he's doing like yeah. a good job <laughs> but like it's very i don't weird. think yeah i was about to say i think he's doing a good job at portraying the character a certain way but i don't know if it needed to be presented like he needed to be in the script that way you know yeah and like just I, that's that's the weirdest thing about this movie just viewing this movie as a whole as like this quote-unquote iconic piece of media that like there are so many people who are like yeah beetlejuice that guy's funny or like yeah i'm gonna slap a beetlejuice onto this thing that i like i'm like <laughs> but then Why? again then again if they're if it's in reference to the musical version it makes a lot more yeah, sense. that's true again he's a much different character in the musical version yeah and he's a much more active character he not only carries the comedy well in the mm-hmm. beetlejuice musical he also carries the plot a lot harder <laughs> you know i actually was gonna mention um how a lot of the narrative problems that I have with Beetlejuice, like the movie, are adapted in really well into the Broadway musical. <laughs> no, the Broadway musical is a really good adaptation. In fact, uh, when we first sat down to watch this, we were like, man, it feels really weird that this isn't a yeah, musical. Yeah, no, dude, because we the... sat down, I was like, it's it should be a musical, right? Because like, the Broadway version of this is such a good version of telling this story. Yeah. <laughs> And, like, it does feel kind of like this movie could have actually been pretty fun if they would have worked in some songs more than the ones they already I know, right? Like, just, like, give Beetlejuice a couple musical numbers. I was about to say, at the moment, you could kind of qualify it as a jukebox musical in a very loose sense, but not really. (laughs) They do one song. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Um, But, yeah, no, I just think it's interesting that a lot of the narrative elements that I don't think flow as well, like, as you said, a lot of the stuff in the second part of the movie, um, I think work a lot better uh, on the stage well, version. Well, again, in the stage version, from the word go, because Beetlejuice does most of the narration of the show, he mm-hmm. is the main character of the stage show. It makes a lot more sense um, to have him as the main character. <laughs> his entire active motivation and the motivation of the plot is he wants to break free. He wants to get out. He's so like then, Freddie Mercury. So, <laughs> the, so then the entire rest of the show, instead of just being like the couple hanging out in their house and Beetlejuice kind of being like, hey, don't you want my help? (laughs) The entire time, he's like, yes, I am using this couple. I am trying my darndest (laughs) to get them to help me. And because of that, he tries his best to be a fun and endearing character to them. Exactly. To where they help him out. And uh, that makes him fun and endearing to the audience. And instead, in this version, he's a side character who's actively awful to the main, like, protagonists to the point where they just don't want him. Like, like if he wants to break out, he's like, oh, in the beginning, he's like, oh, this is a gullible couple. They look, and, and they are. But, like, he does everything possible to actively get them to not want his help. I know, right? I don't understand the character of Beetlejuice. 
Yeah, no, it, it makes sense that he was supposed to be a lot scarier in the original draft of this because it would it would work way better if he was like a scary, like an actively like looming threat. Yeah, it was supposed it was supposed to be like essentially this. It was supposed to originally lean a lot more into horror than yeah. comedy. It was still going to be a horror comedy, but it was supposed to lean a lot more into how creepy it was. It was going to be a lot more violent, and he wasn't just going to look like that. He was going to actually be like a creature. Hmm. I think it would have been way cooler. <laughs> I wonder if he would have looked like a beetle, my goodness. I, don't, I doubt it. Because, <laughs> again, Beetlejuice is a reference to the star, not Beetlejuice. Yes. <laughs> um, but, yeah. Uh, do, you have a, do you have another question? Yes. That's, that's kind of my... That was kind of my biggest question. I was about to say, we've kind, of, we've kind of gone over the biggest problems we've had, uh, we have with Beetlejuice. But there's still, there's still more to discuss yeah. here. Uh, what do you think of the insert shot of the giant beetle reading a newspaper? <laughs> that, that's, that's a good insert shot. <laughs> um... Yeah, I mean, you don't have to discuss it further. It's a pretty good shot. If you I mean, don't he's, want a, to. he's a cool looking chap. I like that he says hi. <laughs> um, what do you think of a lot of the afterlife stuff? Like the way uh, it's designed, the way it I works, think, the way they introduce it to us. I think that's really fun. Like, I I think the world of Beetlejuice is really fun. And like, like once they die and when they go into like the... the all of the scenes in the lobby are pretty funny. Oh my um, gosh. Like just the entire... I love the scenes in the lobby. The entire world of that feels so like goofy and yet so like fun to, like, like fun to be in. Fun exactly. to see what's what. The smoking joke is hilarious. Oh my gosh. The smoking joke is so funny. I said it feels like it should be in like a Jack Stober project and I still will stand by that. It's, it's true, my God. <laughs> Um, but yeah, no, I think, I think that whole premise and like just the whole, the way the afterlife is used in general, like even with the handbook of, uh, like for the recently deceased and stuff is a lot of fun, um, and an interesting concept. I was about to say, I really like how much personality they give the general world of Beetlejuice yeah. in, in the screenplay. I see, I can see why they, like, they, why they wanted to do a sequel for it, mm -hmm. because the world is really fun. It's so cool. <laughs> uh, but then again, I'm, they shouldn't have used Beetlejuice for their sequel, no <laughs> Yeah, I was about to say, I honestly... Um, Oh, and by the way, for our listeners, sorry, uh, th they started to make a sequel and then it got canceled because of development stuff. Yeah, um, it's it's odd because there's like part of me that would want just like a straight up, like if they're going to do a movie about Beetlejuice, make it about Beetlejuice and not about this couple. <laughs> exactly. Um, or alternative, make it the world presented in the movie and just have it be the couple exploring it kind of thing. Yeah. and, and I, But it, it feels very bogged down yeah. by trying to put those two together. Yeah, that's like the two halves of what you have uh -huh. in this movie. You have like one half of being like, like this really fun production design's really like endearing. Uh, the couple is fun. A lot of focus on Winona Ryder's character. Exactly, yeah. Like that is like that's the main, Plot. that's the meat of the movie. And then they try and cram Beetlejuice in there. And then Beetlejuice. <laughs> and then there's Beetlejuice. Which, which I'm sure, again, would have worked thematically with him being an active horror antagonist. Yeah, yeah, definitely. But instead we have just this goofy guy with his goofy whoa, hijinks. Whoa, whoa. Oh, better, he's, he sure is trying to get out. <laughs> What will happen in the climax when he merely is just trying to get married and have nobody say his name? That's it. That's the whole thing. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah, the movie definitely feels... It, it, like, that, that's basically the biggest problem I have with Beetlejuice. It just kind of sputters out because yeah. it's trying to do two completely different things. Exactly. I would have loved a, just a movie about Juno or something. <laughs> Right? Like, like, there are a lot of really fun elements. Heck, I'd take a movie about that little priest man. Micah, a, a, a Hail Caesar movie, a Hail Caesar style movie about Juno. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be pretty good. That would be so good. I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna write that. <laughs> Same like same like themes and ideas behind Hail Caesar. They do her as like a very Jesus esque character. Uh -huh. <laughs> that would be so good. <laughs> yeah, let's get the Cohen brothers on that one. <laughs> 
I was about to say the the preacher guy at the end of the movie is my favorite part of the whole movie. <laughs> <laughs> I just love him. <laughs> yeah, like I mean, it's great. Like Revy said, there's no, there's almost nothing uh, as comedically good as like a character like fitting a hole exactly and just like I was walking, say, walking like, through a door that's exactly shaped like their body. <laughs> <laughs> it's peak comedy it's so funny <laughs> yes if you've never seen beetlejuice just watch the marriage scene and then look for the little preacher guy <laughs> it's pretty good you know you know what makes me sad too in another just instance of the ending not working well what if you think about that end scene uh like otho summons them mm-hmm. they're like dying but they have no agency. Like, from that moment exactly. on, they have no agency, really, in the plot. Really, from the moment they decide they want to extort the ghosts for money, the two main characters, the people that they got us to like, mm-hmm. the people that we wanted to watch, uh-huh. have zero agency <laughs> in the plot. Exactly. I don't even think they have, like, any dialogue besides, like, no, and beetle war. <laughs> <laughs> beetle war. <laughs> <laughs> is that is that what they say? My <laughs> yes, because then it becomes like Beetlejuice and Winona Ryder, and that's it. But like those characters don't have any connection. She just walks in, and he's like, "Yes, Beetlejuice." <laughs> I was about to say the only real connection between like the Beetlejuice plot and the couple plot is he saves them at the end technically it does he even does he we don't know like he, the, the, at first i really honestly thought he just wouldn't just, because at first he just like he just, collapses, like, collapses them. them on the ground <laughs> and then like seems to do nothing actively to them and then I they know, just right? pop up <laughs> yeah and like and he's like offers to help them that's really the only connection beetlejuice has to the like the main plot of the movie and he obviously seems so not interested in helping like, exactly. like that's what i'm saying he never once actively tries to <laughs> manipulate anybody which is so weird for the kind, kind of, of character baffling. that he is <laughs> i know <laughs> he's very straightforward about everything <laughs> You could say he kind of tries to manipulate Winona Ryder's character. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. But, like, he clearly doesn't actually care about helping them. And, like... He, yeah, he's, it's weird. <laughs> I, I don't understand his character still. His, that's the, my biggest problem with, with the movie. I was about to say, I think the movie would have really benefited from just either totally doubling down on him and making him, like, the main character of the movie... Or just completely cutting him. Yeah, and if you made him the main character, again, you have the two options. You have the original idea of mm-hmm. making him like a more horror antagonist. Or you can do what the stage show did and make him a lot more fun and sympathetic. Like an anti-hero kind of interesting. thing. interesting. Yeah. <laughs> you, in the stage production, you do care about if Beetlejuice, like, you know gets what he wants exactly. you're, you're you're invested in him even though he's not the greatest of people <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah no it's 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 really odd because i really don't have any other problems with this movie that's really yeah. it <laughs> no it's crazy because there's so much that's good about this movie <laughs> There's so much fun. The scenes are good. The actors have chemistry. The, the comedic cinema. timing is quite good. The filmmaking is good. The editing is good. The score is phenomenal. Yeah. Like, One of my favorite Danny Elfman <laughs> scores, actually. It's a just completely bogged down on a on a story level from mm-hmm. just the, the complete not combination of their two halves. Yeah. Yeah. But I mean, this is this would be a great movie to like get a bunch of friends over and watch. Oh, totally! Like this is just a fun movie. I was about to say the vibes here are immaculate. Mike. Even <laughs> even when Beetlejuice at his most not interesting to watch, <laughs> yeah. uh, like he like it still manages to be pretty fun. Exactly. Um, yeah, I don't know. There, there's not too much else I wanted to mention. Like I I think it's a lot of fun. It has its script problems, and I mean that's that's pretty much all I had I mean, to say I about it. I'm not sure I have too many other comments. I mean, like it's I'm a, glad I watched it finally. Yeah, no, <laughs> I, I'm totally glad I watched it. I'll watch it again. I'll probably like like my girlfriend really likes this. I'll probably watch it with her. Like it's yeah. just one of those kind of movies that's just fun to turn on. Like 
a fun Halloween flick, if you will. Indeed. I, I can see why it has become a classic. I just don't see why Beetlejuice himself is as exactly. loved as he is. Like, it's a very, it's a very easy to like movie. Mm-hmm. It's a very enduring movie. Yeah. But Beetlejuice himself is not an endearing <laughs> character in the movie. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, but I, yeah, I, I guess that's, I guess that's all we really wanted to talk about. Right, wait, um, here's my theory. Okay. Here's okay. my theory for why Beetlejuice Say is it. used and stuff. Do it. So it's one of those things, right? I just thought about this now. Okay. It's one of those things <laughs> where, uh, like this is kind of an older movie. People have a lot of nostalgia for it. One. Okay. Two, it's just really fun. Yeah. But there's almost nothing to actually grasp onto from an aesthetic standpoint, but Beetlejuice. So they're just like, yeah, Beetlejuice, just slap Beetlejuice up. They haven't watched it. I suppose it. so. They haven't watched it in a Like long iconography time. and stuff. Yeah. Like, I guess the sandworms you could. But the, <laughs> the sandworms are nothing in this movie, right? I love the sandworms. They're, I, they're so they're cool. funny. They're cool. It's so cool. But like they don't they don't add anything. <laughs> I love the sandworms. But yeah, like like that's my only possible theory is it's kind of one of those just like dissonance things where they separate the movie from the actual like aesthetics of like the movie that's fair and they're like yeah i like this movie i like it a lot so uh beetlejuice it's a cool character design slap that on something exactly instead of actually being like oh i'm a big fan of the character of beetlejuice allow me to endorse him by putting him on something it's like it's like cool uh probably cool looking problematic anime <laughs> exactly <laughs> you just know like oh that character design is dope exactly and like the character that. you know he's actually kind of boring but you know <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna go with it anyway or like 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 having like a like a like you said like a problematic anime yeah. with like a really like with some good stuff but like exactly. the main character is af- actually like awful terrible but they're like yeah slap that guy on my happy meal i, I have a feeling you, i have a sneaking suspicion that you're probably right because <laughs> that striped suit does look quite nice. yeah that's the only thing i can think of because i was like wait a minute if it wasn't beetlejuice what else would you like if you support, if you <laughs> like Baldwin's if you face. like this movie what else do you have to grasp onto from a visual aesthetic standpoint really the sandworms are the only other thing i can think of <laughs> and like, then no one no like one's I gonna guess, put a sandworm i guess a goth one owner writer but that's not really something that you can do in, yeah like, it's not easily discernible he in... has a character design exactly. as beetlejuice and almost no other character in this has a character design like that and that's the only thing i can think of because i can't imagine people actually being like ah beetlejuice <laughs> the house is pretty cool of course that d- that doesn't justify people dressing up as him i will not excuse that wow <laughs> <laughs> the only excuse you have for that is if you're dressing up for the stage version. <laughs> wow. There you go, Micah. You just just pretend that they're all dressing up as the stage Beetlejuice. <laughs> uh, but yeah, that's that's all I really had to add. I just thought of that now, though. Alrighty. Well, I guess since we have officially stated our opinions on Beetlejuice now, um, let's give our ratings one last time in case you missed them. I gave it three and a half stars and a like. I gave it a seven out of ten and a like. Uh, or eight out of ten. I did actually. also want to. Uh, I did also want to mention just our okay. Tim Burton ratings okay. Okay. since uh, our rankings. Rankings okay. since there's not like a. We have rated the human being you Tim Burton. <laughs> since, since there's not we a. Gave... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no. Solid three. Now. Solid three. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I was just gonna go over mine really quick, just for like the top ten, probably. Okay. okay. Um. My top 10 for Tim Burton, because I feel like we've done a couple Tim Burton, like, discussions on yeah. here before. Yeah, no, we've mentioned his stuff qu- quite a bit. Uh, for number one, I have Big Fish. Number two, I have Sleepy Hollow. Number three, I have Edward Scissorhands. Number four, I have Big Eyes. Surprising. <laughs> number Surprising. five, I have Pee Wee's Big Adventure. <laughs> number six, I have Sweeney Todd and the Demon Barber of Fleet Street. <laughs> Fleet uh, Street. <laughs> number seven, I have Batman. <laughs> number eight, I slotted Beetlejuice. All right. Number nine, Frank and Weenie. And number ten, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. Alrighty. Um, mine is uh, one Edward Scissorhands at number two, Sleepy Hollow. Number three is Big Fish. Uh, number four is Pee Wee's Big Adventure. 
Uh, number five is Beetlejuice. Number six is Sweeney Todd and the Demon Barber of Fleet Street. Uh, number seven, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. Number eight, Frank and Weenie. Uh, number nine is Batman. And then number Big ten is Big Guys. And barely, Micah. <laughs> Big Guys is a very weird and kind of awful-ish, it's but good. Awful. No, it's awful-ish, but it's actually good. <laughs> it's, it's a weird it's movie. Not- good no but it's good <laughs> exactly and amy adams is in it it's true amy adams and she's got bangs from me. i mean the, really the, the micah it really just kind of wins by default because corpse bride is beneath it yeah <laughs> I mean, I've got Miss uh, I've got Miss Peregrine's Home for Peculiar Children and Alice in Wonderland above Corpse Bride. Oof! <laughs> I'm really like Alice, Alice in Wonderland. Alice in Wonderland is garbage. It's the live action bad, one, but it's fun garbage. It is actual garbage. It's fun garbage. <laughs> <laughs> this is Tim Burton's worst movie by far. No, Robbie, yes. Mars Attack and Dumbo exist. No. I will not hear that Alice in Wonderland is Tim Burton's worst movie. It is, Robbie. You, Dumbo. The sooner the sooner you accept that, Robbie, the sooner you Robbie can move on. Dumbo. The most watered down Disney <laughs> Tim Burton awful dumpster fire of a movie I have seen. At least it's somewhat competent compared to Alice no, in Wonderland. Robbie, like... Mars Attack. Mars Attack. <laughs> Nothing is good about Mars Attack. Mars Attack has some fun satire ideas, and that's about all I like about it. <laughs> uh, but yes, those are our Tim Burton rankings. Um,. Go watch Big Fish. Go That's watch Big Fish. Uh, go go watch that top three. Our, we our we top gave three the, same the same top yeah, three, just in different order. Edward Scissorhands, Sleepy Hollow, and Big Fish. Big Fish. Ed- <laughs> Sleepy Hollow and Edward <laughs> Sleepy Hollow rocks, man. Big Fish is fantastic. Pee-wee's Big Adventure rocks, too. We don't talk about that enough. <laughs> anyway, let's get into our uh, what we watched this, this week. Let's do it. Perchance. Let's do it. All right, so for those of you who don't know, the What We Watched segment is kind of this this short little end segment where we go over everything we've watched in the week since we did our last episode. Whoa. Uh, It's where we get our name recently logged since we used the the social media writing thing called Letterboxd in which you log films. Yes. (laughs) That was a weird way to explain it. What date are we starting on? Uh, Since the episode uh, of uh, Muppets Haunted Mansion came out on the uh, 18th, we are starting on the 18th. All right. So, um, on the 18th, the first thing we watched is we we rewatched The Aviator, which we watched for the first time, uh, like, a week ago, like two weeks ago, I guess. Yeah. Um, I really wanted to rewatch it because it had kind of been, like, sitting in my mind... I couldn't, like, I could just, like, I was just thinking about the aviator all the time. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I still really enjoyed it, uh, and I still think it was really, like, it's a, I think it's a very impressive film. Yes. Um, I think it's, it's filmmaking is phenomenal, it's screenplay is a little weird, but I still love it today. <laughs> I was about to say, we talked about it uh, last week on yeah. the pod, so. I, um, I still gave it five stars, just because I really love it. <laughs> uh, yeah, my rating stayed the same. I still think this film is really terrifying. <laughs> It is. <laughs> I was like, I did not expect it to be going into it with a movie called The Aviator. What? It's a biopic about Howard Hughes. How scary can it be? Didn't expect it to be actually horrifying. Exactly. Uh, then on the 19th. The 19th. Uh, you watched It Comes at Night for the first time. I did we'll watch talk It Comes about at Night. I watched yeah, we're gonna it. We're going to watch it, yeah. Uh, and then watched creature from the black lagoon which i always thought was called the creature from the black lagoon but it's apparently just creature from the black lagoon the 1954 one yeah baby um i was uh weird not movie. not a fan weird movie <laughs> um the humans are clearly the villains all i all yes. i could think of was wow i totally get why uh shape of water was made <laughs> yeah i was about to say um i re- i actually kind of enjoyed it it has a quite a, a pretty pretty terrible pacing <laughs> like it's it's got a big pace, pacing problem but um i think i think it's pretty good for what it is you know 
Um, the sexual undertones are definitely there in this also. Yeah. <laughs> I can all, yeah, as Micah said, I can very much see why, uh, Shape of Water Honest, was made. <laughs> honestly, that's the only lens that I enjoyed it through was that, like, just exactly. thinking about it in contrast to, like, what it did for movies and, like, for the Shape of exactly. Water and stuff and for monster movies. I was about to say, time. it's a very, it's a very significant film in film history and I don't think it's quite that good. It's got a big pacing problem and the score is kind of obnoxious but like other than that i like the cast for the most part yeah, i didn't really like the cast. um <laughs> i just didn't like the plot either the like, makeup just... and costuming was really cool too i didn't expect the fi- i didn't expect the creature to look as fishy as he does <laughs> like he's got like the blubber <laughs> and he's got like the <laughs> breathing <laughs> <laughs> he looks like a giant fish man. <laughs> That's what he is, Rebby. I know, I just thought he'd look like cooler. He just looks like <laughs> he just looks like a man with the face of a fish. You need you need Guillermo del Toro's <laughs> work to get a fish man to look cool. I was about to say I had only seen like Shape of Water like design for like a fish man, so I was like, oh yeah, he's about to look dope, and then he just looks like this goofy looking <laughs> fish guy. Rebby wanted him to be ape from uh, Hellboy. <laughs> exactly. Oh. Ape from Hellboy. What a good character. Uh, anyway, One of my I gave favorite it, characters. I gave it two and a half. Uh, I gave it a six out of ten. Uh, then on the 20th, we watched It Comes at Night, this time with me. I rewatched It Comes at Night. Um, which, very weird picture. Very very odd flick. Um, <laughs> it's, it's weird that everybody hates it. I want to actually do it on the podcast I don't know, sometime. I don't know why people don't like it. I feel like, I feel like we could <laughs> deep dive into it on the podcast well. Yeah. Um, because it, it's definitely weird. It definitely has like a marketing problems. I don't yes. understand why. It's, it has a branding problem. Even, even its poster just doesn't really fit the movie that it is. I mean, the poster less so, but like... The trailers, the trailers, oh my gosh! And every everything about this was screaming that it was going to be a horror movie, like just a genre horror and movie. It is not. <laughs> it's not a horror it movie. Is not that. <laughs> but it's really weird that everybody is like, "Ha ha, this is so surface level." Be uh, like, because it looks so indie, I guess. Like because it looks indie and is from A two four, people are like, "Wow, this is like every indie A two four horror movie." Like, and I just don't get that. I think it's a pretty great, like, drama thriller about, like, grief and paranoia. Yeah, no, I Me really personally. <laughs> I really enjoy the nightmare sequences a lot. Mm-hmm. I think it does a good job weaving its story. Oh my gosh. I think, I think my biggest problem with it is just that the story doesn't really stay interesting that much. That is true. It, it kind of loses its spice about halfway through, but it's still it's still quite fun. I yeah, think. I think I think if it was <laughs> it's only 90 minutes. I think if it was a little shorter, <laughs> it would <laughs> I think if it's a little shorter, uh, I would <laughs> Dude, maybe it should have been a shorter film. <laughs> Just like I, a long short film. Yeah, I was about to say maybe like a 40 minute thing might have suited it better, but I I actually like its length no, I, I think I if really you just cut i think if you literally just cut down like a handful of scenes it would it would flow a lot maybe better. even just rework some stuff but yeah. anyway i think you'd have to really deep dive into it to really get down to like the meat of why people don't like it and why i i thought it was pretty good i give it four stars yeah i give it four stars as well I, an eight out of ten baby i genuinely really liked the nightmare sequences a lot the i thought they were really epic <laughs> fantastic <laughs> and the way they do the lighting is fantastic Zen on the 20th. What did you watch, Jeremy? I watched the uh, 1932 film The Old Dark House, which uh, is an old horror movie. I, I feel like I don't really have to specify that <laughs> from the title and the year, but um, it was interesting in a lot of ways. Um, a lot moodier than I expected it to be. Like, it was more of a mood piece than an actual horror movie. <laughs> um <laughs> It was pretty boring on the whole, but um, it had a couple fun performances and occasionally had some good horror stuff in it. So I don't know. I gave it a six out of ten. It was it was fun. It was fine. It's pretty then, good. Then on the night of the twenty first, we watched Dune in IMAX Dune. when it released in the U.S. Okay. Another Sandworm movie. Uh, I, I'm a, I'm a huge Dune book fan. Uh, it's probably one of my favorite books in general micah's like i read dune book uh and i was very this this was like my most anticipated movie for like forever wow (laughs) uh since it was announced almost um 
and I really, really loved it. I can see why people wouldn't like it as much, mm-hmm. not being huge book fans. Uh, but it, like, as a book fan, it was like a perfect screen adaptation of what I wanted it to be. And it was amazing watching it at IMAX. Yeah, I hate books, Mike. <laughs> They're my enemy. <laughs> the score is. <laughs> <laughs> and the cinematography is great i love uh the knees work um the cast is really good uh it's got some pacing problems it's got some weird structure problems but i love it infinitely and i gave it two uh, five stars wow 10 out of 10 amazing <laughs> um I, I mean i liked it too i i really enjoyed seeing it in a theater um, I'm glad I got to see the sandworms on the big screen. Apparently, just put a sandworm in your movie and I'll like it, <laughs> is, the, is the real lesson. Um, I gave it a 7 out of 10. I thought it was pretty solid. I don't know how it is as an adaptation. I've heard it's a good adaptation. It's a really good adaptation. <laughs> um, I like how it does its world building. Um, the way it introduces everything is really concise and good. Um, the VFX look pretty great. Um lighting is really good even though it's a grayish kind of movie the lighting is dynamic enough that the image is never boring like you might get with a marvel movie (laughs) um and yeah i don't know it was good i had a good time yeah i will i will add one comment though to it i think it does spend a lot of time like a lot of its subtext filmmaking time kind of winking to the book fans more than it probably should <laughs> like there is a lot of book references in this well i mean it is an adaptation a of lot book. of direct lines and a lot of book like references to later books in the series that i don't even think they'll get to adapt <laughs> wow like i don't know it was very like like i will add that but like for me it was great but still i can see why people would just like not be as completely like captured by this yeah i was about to say i mean i gave it a seven out of ten i thought it was pretty great i think it's filmmaking is really solid though yeah um luke had this to say about my rating he said wow i thought it uh, the movie would pretentious you into a five out of five it's really not that pretentious. i know that's i was like wait a minute luke have you seen the movie yet? he hasn't it's, seen it yet. it's not really that pretentious like it's it's really just kind of a straightforward sci-fi like, blockbuster yeah it's, yeah, kind it's of a thing. sci-fi epic blockbuster which is weird coming from like dunny but like it's really not that weird like Blade Runner is pretentious <laughs> sci-fi, but yeah. this is not really like a rival is pretentious, pretentious sci-fi yeah. enemy, like almost every other single one of his <laughs> movies. But this one is pretty serialized in terms of... I was about to say, this feels <laughs> the most commercial, like... I would ever expect from Denis, like as a director. It's and I mean, weird. I guess it had to be. And I mean, it's working. The movie yeah. is performing amazingly well, which everybody thought, like, oh, from weird, pretentious sci fi director of some weird, pretentious book series. <laughs> about... This Dune pretentious. <laughs> it's pretty pretentious. Okay. <laughs> um, but yeah, I'm glad it's doing well. Well, there you go. I'm glad people are enjoying it. Uh, and the very next day, we watched uh, Shang-Chi and well, wait, hold The Legend on, of the Ten Rings, on. Micah. The Ten I Rings! I also, on the 22nd, watched uh, Pachamama. Uh, <laughs> okay. Missed, you really need to halt the whole podcast to mention this. I, I missed, like, the first good chunk you of it. You didn't even watch um, the movie. But I logged it, and I wanted to mention it because it was fun, and it okay. was a cool, like, it, it was another one of those, like, kids' movies from a different culture, okay. and it's fun, and it's interesting, and I liked the animation, and yeah, I just wanted to shout it, it out. looks like Wind Waker. I gave it three stars. It does look like Wind Waker. <laughs> Then we watched Shang-Chi. <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, Legend of the Ten Rings. First time. Also, we got to go to the theater two days in a row. Which right, was which cool. was crazy. We, cool. we like, never go to we the theater ever. The and then theater. we went to it two days in a row, which was cool. Um, but, yeah. I don't think I ever got my stub for this movie. It was, <laughs> I don't think I did either. Oh. <laughs> you know, it was, it, was a, it was a Marvel movie. It was fun it's a marvel movie it was fine (laughs) i don't really have too many massive problems with it i mean visually i don't think the visuals worked that well and i know a lot of people hyped up the visuals of this movie and i just didn't think it looked that great aquafina is kind of unbearable in the first half of this movie 
and God, but kind of through the entire movie. <laughs> it's very weird. Aquafina in every movie is very weird. I think she should exclusively be cast in dramas just to where she yes. can actually be good. So she does not try to attempt comedy because I don't think she's funny she is at not, all. She is not funny, uh, but she's she does she does an outstanding performance in the farewell. <laughs> yes, go watch the farewell instead. That's much better. <laughs> um, but yeah, I don't really. I don't really have too many comments. It was just kind of underwhelming because I had heard a lot of people say it was like a very break in the MCU's like feel, but it just felt aggressively MCU to me. Well, I heard that a lot of people liked it just because it was more of a breath of fresh air rather than a break, which it it kind of it is. Feel, it feels more Glory Days MCU than yeah. a lot of projects yeah. that have come out, but it's still not really something it's that not- I was... No, I'm never going to revisit it. I'm not, yeah, I, unless somebody is like, hey, you want to go watch this movie? And <laughs> at which I would be like, I'd rather watch any other movie. But um, <laughs> like, it's just not something I'd go rewatch. You'd rather watch something... Incredibles 2, Mike? No. <laughs> but it's not something like I would actively like ever seek out to watch again. Yeah, it's... It's fine. It's a fine movie. And it's kind of and kind of bothers me in terms of the MCU specifically too because it does another thing that the MCU really likes to do where they introduce another whole cast <laughs> of bad guys with like 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 the 10 rings another secret underground and, uh, army that's been controlling everything. <laughs> yeah, and they did it with Black Widow, they did it with How Hydra, they? they yeah. <laughs> And I'm like, like, like I was genuinely like thinking to myself, like, did these guys all like get together and have a meeting? They're like, yeah, which government should like we promote? Like the League of Evil Exes, because I, I feel like there has to be some conflict of interest of all of these covert organizations pulling off assassinations and overthrowing governments. Like, what if they, what if they one time disagreed on which government should be overthrown? Like, and why haven't they just come together and taken over the U.S. since everybody seems to care about the darn us so much (laughs) yeah no it's a weird movie it's weird (laughs) and like this man's supposed to have like like the ten rings and this man have been around since like i don't know probably like the 1600s or something something like that (laughs) it's just very weird don't yeah. like it. Yeah, it was but I, a, the movie was fine. It was fine. I en- like. I enjoyed watching it. I gave it a theaters. six out of ten. I gave it a, I guess six out of ten. A three star. <laughs> yeah. Micah, we rate on a ten point system, so I say I my rate ratings on out a of 10. five star system <laughs> with half stars. half stars. So that means there's two values for every star. Yes, Micah, so but, there's ten but points. Robbie, it is one. I'm not saying <laughs> a one star as I give it a two out of ten because that is stupid. When you could say one star. <laughs> wow. Okay. Okay. Um, <laughs> then, well, we, then we then we or then I rewatched. Oh wait, you watched stuff. I watched a lot of stuff. Oh my stuff, gosh! Yes. What the heck? Um, <laughs> you hadn't seen what I watched. Oh like, my gosh! Okay. Um, so I just mention features. Later that day, later that day, I watched uh, the Pink Panther, the '60s version, uh, the '63 um, Peter Sellers version. Which Micah, you need to watch this because you like um, like '70s comedies, and this is very much in that vein, even though it, it was made in the '60s. Um, it's very good. You guys should go watch it. It's, I'd say, I think I like it better than the newer Pink Panther, like the first one. That's the only other one I've seen. Um, but they're two entirely different styles of comedy. Um, and I think they both work pretty well. I gave it an eight out of 10. Um, and just to mention, uh, stuff, I'm going to mention stuff that I rated like eight or higher. So, Um, I watched Us Again for the first time, Disney Plus original short film, very, very good. I like La La Land, so I like this short film, (laughs) is essentially how it goes. Um, Yeah, definitely recommend Us Again, good stuff. I watched Through the Mirror for the first time, the uh, 30s Disney cartoon, which the only reason I uh, watched it uh, is because there's an Epic Mickey level based on (laughs) it. So uh, I was I was interested. Plus, this era. Of, yeah, I remember that. I was about to say this era of Disney is so much fun. Like the 30s and stuff. Their animation department was killing the game. Um, and I also watched The Old Mill, which is a Disney short film, also, and it's very very good. And you should still check it out while it's spooky season because it has frogs and a bunch of other creepy stuff. 
Good stuff. I like it. It's good. It's great. I gave it a 10 out of 10. Uh, and that, those were all the great uh, things I watched. Out of I watched a bunch of short films, so... Uh, what did, what did you watch, my kids? Well, on the twenty third, I rewatched Dune at home, uh, Dune. which was which was a different experience. Dune uh, at home, <laughs> but I still really loved it, like every second of it. So I still gave it five stars. And then we well, watched the Beetle, the Beetle, the Juice, <laughs> the Star, the Fire, the Live, the Wire. <laughs> yes, go uh, watch Teen yeah. Titans go. <laughs> that, <laughs> To the, to the movies, Ruby. To the movies. To the movies, yes. Please, please don't, oh, yes, don't yes, tell yes, people to, to go movies. watch the show. <laughs> yes, to the Teen Titans go to the movies. Yes. Uh, yeah, go watch go watch Dune. Uh, go watch It Comes at Night, I guess. Yeah, do it. Um, that, that's a good movie. The Aviator. Very good. <laughs> the Aviator. Very and, good. Uh, very good. Maybe, maybe Beetlejuice if you feel so inclined. Beetlejuice. Mm. And, and have, have a good Halloween. Have a good Halloween. I don't. Stay safe out there, kids. Yeah, stay safe out there. <laughs> I don't know what we're doing next week. I, I think it's post Halloween, so I don't know if we're gonna just do like a normal movie or break into trying to find some Thanksgiving movie or something. Yeah, I'm thinking we might try and do a Thanksgiving movie, and then uh, we were gonna do uh, Muppets Most Wanted with Luke after that. Mm. So we have plans. We have the plan. I'm not in on the planning, but <laughs> oh we have plans. You could you could ask about the planning if you want to. I Mike. think I think one of my friends wanted to do a Ferris Bueller episode. <laughs> Ferris Mueller. Mueller. <laughs> Fair enough. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, uh, we'll catch you guys in the next one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we, just get, we just get a random laugh at the end. <laughs> wow.